this tutorial we're going to take a look at Twixter in Sony Vegas. This tutorial is an introduction to the basic settings and will discuss special issues such as handling video fields and frame rates in the following tutorial. When we start a new project in Sony Vegas we will go to File, New, and the New Project dialog box will appear. You can choose a template from the drop-down menu, or another option is to set the properties based on a clip. You can just select the Match Media Settings button and then browse for a clip that has the settings you want to use for the project. If you click Open, you will see that the frame size, frame rate, pixel aspect ratio, and field order of the chosen file are detected and the project properties are set to match. You will want to check a few of the other properties as related to Twixter. You can choose 8-bit or 32-bit for the pixel format. As for rendering quality, you can choose Best, although Twixter does not follow the rendering quality settings of Vegas. The only way to control the render time of Twixter is to change the option in the Track Quality menu within Twixter. We can also choose the deinterlace method. We will choose none if our material is progressive and interpolate if our material is fields based. If we're mixing fields based material with progressive, this is a special scenario and you can see how to address that in our documentation or the next tutorial. You won't use the blend option with Twixter. You can click OK. We can import the clip or clips that we want to work with at this point. The next thing we'll want to do is make a subclip from our original. We make a subclip because it is non-destructive and in Twixter the first frame defined in the clip or subclip is the first frame that Twixter uses. Let's take a quick look at my original footage. We can create a subclip of our original clip by right mouse clicking on our original clip and selecting Open in Trimmer. It's in the trimmer that you have the option to edit the in and out points if you choose to, or leave it at its original in and out points. Now you can right mouse click and select Create Subclip and drag that subclip into your timeline as an event. I'm going to change the timecode to frame numbers by right clicking on the timecode and selecting Time Format absolute frames. You don't have to work with frame numbers like I've chosen to do. That's a user's preference and you have the option. And now we can add Twixter by going to the Video Effects tab and selecting Twixter and dragging it to our subclip on the timeline. Or we can go to View, Plugin Manager, and Twixter. We can also right click on the track in the timeline and choose Video, Event, Effects, and Twixter. Here we will use Video Event Effects because we make the sequence longer than the original. You will use Media Effects and not Video Event Effects when you want your result to be shorter than the original. This is because of a problem in Sony Vegas that will produce incorrect results when shortening and using Twixter as a Video Event Effects. We'll see how to slow it down overall using speed percentage option and then in another example on how to retime using the frame number option. We'll also go over animating keyframes. Let's get started. We will start by slowing this clip to 20% of the original speed overall. First we need to extend the length of the clip to the length of our desired result. We can write mouse clip on our subclip on the timeline and, and select switches loop and make sure that loop is checked or it will just freeze the last frame of the clip for the duration when we extend it. How long do we need to make it? Well, let's do the math. If we're slowing this clip to 20%, we can divide 100% by 20 and know that we need to loop this clip five times to make it long enough. That would be 275 frames in this case because the subclip we're using is 55 frames long. 
That was 55 times 5, in case you weren't paying attention. Now we can drag the right edge of the clip to frame 275, and we can see that our event is now the same shot looping 5 times. The beginning of each loop is indicated by a little notch on the timeline. Let's look at the controls in Twixter. Once inside, we see the familiar Twixter menu. That is, if you've used Twixter in any other application. Now, I will set the display to Twixter to output to display the result. We will go ahead and leave all of the other options on their default settings. We will leave the track quality on best and the frame interpolation on blend. For the time remap, we have two choices. We have frame number and we have speed. We can use speed, which is based on a percentage for this event, since we're slowing it down to 20%. We can enter 20 in the dialog box. We leave everything else on the default settings for now. OK, now let's preview our result by going to Tools, Preview, and Player, and render this preview. We can see that he's driving really slow now. 80% slower, in fact. Let's go ahead and see a different example now. We can use this piggy bank clip, and although it's slow overall, I want to vary the speed throughout while leaving the duration the same. I've already added Twixter, and we can use it to speed it up in the beginning, slow it way down through the crash so we can really see all the bits and pieces flying in different directions, and then just ramp it back to its original speed at the end. We can use the frame number option as the time remap method to do this. We can animate the keyframes by selecting the little animate icon and we see the keyframe controller pop up at the bottom of the video effects window. I'm going to select the sync cursor button because I want to sync the keyframe cursor with the timeline cursor. At frame 1, I will set frame 1. So the first frame of the clip will be set at the first frame of the timeline. Incidentally, I changed my project properties to start at frame 1 because frame 0 is the default. That's also another user preference. I have my display set to source, so I can see and figure out which frames I would like to change. If I scrub through, I can see that the frame just before the piggy crashes is frame 68. I want to make the first part happen faster, so I'm going to go back to frame 35 and set frame 68 in the dialog box. If I switch the display to Twixter to output, we can see that the piggy is just where I want him. Let's go back to display the source and figure out which frame we want to be the end of the slow-mo crash, because we're going to stretch that out a bit. I like frame 215, so I'm going to switch my display back to Twixter to output again and go to the place on the timeline that I want to remap frame 215 to. I think I like frame 400. I can enter 215 in the dialog box and that will set a new keyframe. It will remap frame 215 from our source to frame 400 of our new retimed result. Now we can go to the end of the timeline at frame 500 and we can enter 500 in the dialog box to make sure our last frame of the original clip is at the last frame of the new result clip. You can see that our keyframes have been set here. We can always right click on the keyframe itself to see and select different interpolation options like linear, smooth, fast, slow, sharp, and hold. We can also go to Curves and select Manual to adjust the handle of the spline curve. Let's go ahead and render a preview and take a look at our result. This was an overview of some of the basic tools in Twixter within Sony Vegas. Check out the next tutorial for some more advanced techniques.